Voters in New Hampshire's second congressional district will decide tomorrow whether to keep the Democrat who has represented them for six years or try someone new. WMUR's Mike Cronin is live in Peterborough where the candidates are fighting for every vote tonight. Mike? On one side, the newcomer is, uh, the newcomer says that he's gonna shock New Hampshire tomorrow. And on the other side, the incumbent is counting on her record to deliver another victory. Man, Democrat Annie Custer hopes voters will send her back to Washington, saying she will build on the progress she's made in the second congressional district. We caught up with her at a campaign office in Lebanon. She also made stops in New London, Hanover and Claremont today. She says a strong voter turnout will bring the results that Democrats are hoping for. Republican Steve Negron was holding signs in Peterborough after he visited Nashua, Wilton, Temple and Keene. Negron says the district is ready for a change and that he would bring a new approach to Congress to bring people together. Very big issues to us. The opiate issue hasn't gotten better in the six years with uh, Congresswoman Custer. The veterans that I'm talking about being a veteran myself, you know, what's going on with the VA Medical Center, that hasn't gotten better. We care about our schools. We care about our environment. We care about everybody, uh, whatever their religion or background. We are the party that cares. And these candidates are taking advantage of every last moment before the polls open and they will be back out in the morning trying to connect with as many voters as they can. Reporting live in Peterborough, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. And as we march along, the race for governor tightening this election eve as voters prepare to go to the polls. Democratic challenger Molly Kelly is trying to unseat first-term Republican Governor Chris Sununu. Political director Adam Sexton looks at how the major party candidates arrived at this point. Former five-term state senator Molly Kelly first sat down with News 9 in March as she considered a run for governor. People in New Hampshire want to be involved. Um, they have a voice, they want it to be heard, they want to be engaged, and they're very concerned about the direction that the state is going. She jumped right in, and in her primary, Kelly picked up endorsements unprecedented in the recent history of the New Hampshire Democratic Party from Senators Maggie Hassan and Jean Shaheen. One of my uh, first opportunities to serve our state came when then Governor Shaheen appointed me to serve on the New Hampshire Commission on the Status of Women. And I am thankful for your faith in me then and in now. The political watchers expected a close race, but Kelly crushed her opponent and then turned her full attention to the incumbent. Let me send a message to Chris Sununu. Do not underestimate me. I, I've been underestimated before. And as a single mom raising three children, working my way through college, and law school to open doors of possibilities for myself and for my children. On the general election campaign trail, she's made paid family leave, public education funding, and gun control her top priorities. I um, want to build a, a New Hampshire that works for everyone, uh, and not just a few. You know, I'm concerned that uh, that's not happening here in our state, and uh, I want to make sure that everybody has opportunities and policies, and not just a few. Chris Sununu is a governor on the go. His first term, a flurry of consequential bill signings, from providing funding for full-day kindergarten to DCYF reform to the repeal of concealed carry permitting for handguns and expanding health care choice for veterans. When it came time to file for re-election in June, he opted for no fanfare, but wasn't shy about touting his record of accomplishment. I mean, you can go down the list on and on. So we've had tremendous success here in just uh, 18 short months, and we're going to continue that success over the next two years. The governor is also in the process of establishing the long-awaited, federally funded ramp-up of drug treatment across the state to deal with the opioid crisis. When President Donald Trump came to New Hampshire in March to address the drug epidemic, Sununu was on hand to greet him at the airport. As Trump has come to dominate national politics, the governor has managed to work with the White House on his own terms, stating his strong support while distancing himself enough at times to not be considered part of Trump's New Hampshire inner circle. you got to call him kind of like you see him, and I think people understand that. He's the youngest governor in America, and his favorability ratings remain high. One aspect of Sununu's appeal, he's not above having a little fun. <laughs> On the serious side, Sununu has garnered key endorsements for a second term, including the backing of the professional firefighters of New Hampshire, 
In some ways, an unlikely alliance, the governor says, shows his approach to the job. It's not about the politics. It's really about the relationships, the relationships we've been able to build. And we'll have more coming up from Adam in a few minutes. But first, we want to go back to WMUR's online poll on voters' top priorities this year. So immigration is your number one issue, coming in second, national security. And here's what the first district candidates consider the biggest threat to the U.S. right now. Well, there, there are a couple uh, uh, national um, threats to our, to our nation right now. We, we have uh, threats from around the globe. Uh, and, and I think um, when it comes to our um, infrastructure, when it comes to our technology, when it comes to uh, our fronts, uh, war fronts, and when you look at Iran, when you look at uh, some of the concerns we have in North Korea, you look at some of the concerns we have for Russia, I think those are things that are, that are a great concern and threat to our nation. I think the biggest threat to U.S. national security is the rise of Russia and China on the world stage. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we have a counterbalance to Russian aggression, uh, to Chinese tactics. They're manipulating their currency and trade agreements. We've got to make sure that we protect America's national security interests and also our workers um, and trade agreements. We should be working with allies from around the world. We should be trusting NATO and investing in our alliances that have kept the world order since World War II. Unfortunately, we have an administration that is alienating our allies left and right, that is not being the beacon of hope and democracy and human rights that we need on the world stage. So I think that Congress needs to assume a role to insist on a mo more coherent strategy internationally. That means leading with diplomacy first and working with our allies from around the world. Well, guess what? The rain's going to carry over into the election day, but the chief is here to say that we might get a bit of a break in the morning, huh? Yeah, there'll be a little bit of a lull. So we're going to go over that timeline of when the heaviest rain moves in, when it moves out, what are the best hours to get to the polls if you don't want to get wet.